we talk about our fingers on the clarinet, it's really important that you know how to teach your students to have the correct hand position because a lot of the frustrations young clarinetists have with playing higher notes and of course crossing the break, which is that expression for moving from the low register to the high register, is simply that their fingers are not in a good position. So first of all, a real basic thing about clarinet, we want to have our fingers in an arch shape and I'll often have my students make a little hand puppet. If they do this, very naturally, their arm will be relaxed, their fingers will be arched, and notice what part of my finger is touching my thumb. It's not the very tip, it's not the flat part, it's sort of in between, and that's the same part of our fingers that would transfer over to the holes, the keys on the clarinet. In a way, if I move my hands here, I'm just doing a little hand puppet on my clarinet. A bad habit that's really easy for clarinet players to fall into is their fingers will go into this shape. They'll, they'll be pressing so hard that that front knuckle is kind of squished down. And that's a really awkward way for fingers to move. I can barely move my finger, and yet when they're like this, they move really, really easily. What I'll often do is ask my students to take their fingers and just set them on their lap when they're sitting down. I'll raise my knee so you can see what this looks like. I'll ask them to move their fingers quickly like this, and they'll naturally put it in a nice arched position. Then I'll ask them to fold that knuckle in. And what you'll see instantly is it's a lot more clumsy. Our fingers don't like to work that way. It's a really nice illustration to them of how this doesn't move nearly as easily as this shape. So that's what we want to look for on their fingers. The left hand is probably the most important hand to notice when you're looking at your clarinet players because it really does affect how easily they can move from the low register to the high register. And I have a little exercise that's quite simple for the students to do, and you can show it to your students as well. I'll have them finger a low C, so thumb and first three fingers. It's one of the first notes that most clarinet players learn. And here's what we're going to watch, is what my index finger is doing up here. I like to have my left hand tilted up a bit. Now, it depends how big the student's hand is, their pinky still have to be able to reach the keys. So some kids are not able to tilt their hand up very far, it depends on the size of their hand. But I like to have this finger touching this A key the entire time, whether or not I'm playing it. And what you'll often see is when students go up to that note, they'll lift this finger up and bring their hand way out of position. And it's very hard to get to the next note. Well, a lot of times an A might be going to high B across the break, and if they're having trouble, it's because their hand is so far out of position. So we want to train this finger to hit the A key with the side of their hand. And here's the exercise I use. This is a totally nonsense note. I play the low C, and then I roll this finger up to hit the A key while I'm holding all my fingers down. So this isn't actually a note. Sounds really bad. But it's training this finger. So in particular, I want you to watch what my index finger is doing here. It's training that finger to move in the way we want it to move. So as I said, we're not really getting a real note there. But that's how my finger should move all the time. So I'll have them do five or six of those till it feels comfortable. And then, and, and I'll have them do it in front of a mirror so they can see what their fingers are doing. Then I'll ask them to lift their fingers up to actually play an A, but to barely lift them, to keep them as close to the keys as possible. And just notice what part of their finger is hitting that key. On most people, it's kind of the knuckle side of that finger. Now what they'll like to do is move it up like this, which is a bad habit, or you'll see their left fingers fly away we want to try and keep them there. Sometimes I'll even hold a pencil kind of in front of their fingers just so that they notice what they're doing, but a mirror will help them with this. So notice I'm trying to keep even my bottom finger as close as possible to the holes. Now I also want you to watch their left wrist. What we want is more or less a straight line from elbow to wrist to fingers. And a lot of students will twist their wrist Here's the bad habit. I'll see if I can play with that bad habit. You'll see it flying around. We want this to look very still. And again, having a student look in a mirror can be really helpful to them because they're going to see whether it's moving or not. Really, you don't see much movement in this part of my hand, which is what we want. A little 
bit that can apply to what we're doing with our thumb and our register key here. We want our thumb not to move a whole bunch, but in the low register, my thumb sits right here. It's touching the register key. When I want to go to the high register, it just has to roll up. So obviously I'm not holding my clarinet in my playing position, but you can see what I'm doing. What I'll often do for my students is have them hold their clarinet out in front of themselves so they can just see their left hand. So now I'm looking at my thumb and noticing it because they can't see that one in a mirror. So what they're looking for, what we're looking for is that they're not moving it around like this. And it really makes a big difference in their ability to cross the break. So you as a teacher, you're looking to make sure this finger's not flying too high, their thumb's not flying too high, and their wrist isn't moving. We're also looking at arched fingers and keeping them close to the keys. Makes a big difference. With the right hand, there's one big habit to look for, and it's actually how they hold their thumb on the thumb rest. Now, if your student is lucky enough to have an adjustable thumb rest, this can make it way more comfortable for the students. And I want to show you how you know how to adjust it to the right height. I ask my students to, with their right hand, make a little hand puppet and then close its mouth. And what they're going to look at is where their thumb sits in relation to these two fingers. And the interesting thing is everyone's hand is different. Some students, their thumb will be more or less under their index finger. Other students, it's more under their middle finger. For me, it's probably about halfway, but maybe a little bit more on my index finger. The thing is, that's what's comfortable and natural for my hand. And when I open it up, I want my thumb to be as close to that position as possible. If it's more on my index finger, I'll have my thumb rest higher. If it's more under my middle finger, I will have my thumb rest lower. So my thumb rest, if you look, sits kind of right between my two fingers, which is what naturally fits my hand best. And I've adjusted students' thumb rests, and they've had a huge difference in how comfortable it is and how easy it is for their right hand fingers to move around. If they have a fixed thumb rest, sometimes if they want it lower, you can at least put a thick thumb rest cushion on so their thumb sits lower. Those are all things that you can try and adapt to if you don't have the luxury of a movable thumb rest. With the right hand and thumb, I'm going to hold this closer so you can see what I'm doing. If I were to just take the clarinet away, you can see the angle my thumb is at. It's not pointing straight up to the ceiling, but it's also not clamping the clarinet sideways, which some students try and do. It's at a bit of an angle. Again, we want to try and have as much as possible a straight line from wrist to um, elbow to arms. And depending on sometimes younger students, their arms aren't quite big enough to do this. They have to tilt their wrist a bit. But what I like to look at is this angle. Do we see a straight line here? And also the sideways angle. We don't want to see the wrist bent this way or this way. As much as possible, pretty straight. Some students will tend to put their thumb rest way closer to their in, in joint here, which is not good. We want to, for most people, have it as close to the nail as possible. And again, a nice thick thumb rest will make a difference. If they don't have a thick thumb rest like this, you can at least put a nice cushion on there so it's a little more comfortable for them. So with the right hand, I like the fingers to be almost 90 degree angle to the clarinet. A lot of students will try and rest this key on their right hand, and that's kind of a bad habit. When my hand is tilted up like this, my little finger here, my pinky finger, can't reach these keys very easily, and you'll see that in a lot of students. This is the biggest hole to cover. This is hard to stretch our pinky down. So if I take my right hand and tilt it down a bit, my finger instantly can go through there. And a great little exercise you can have for them, if I'm looking at these four bottom keys, is just to kind of have my finger move around through them. And they can do this while playing, just to try and do it without moving the whole hand. So if I was doing that in playing position, you can see my wrist is not moving. If we see the wrist rotating and turning, that's a bad habit. So it's just like bringing your hand up like a handshake, drop your clarinet in there. That, that way your thumb will be in the right position. Fingers arched. 
all of that makes a huge difference. Really training them to keep their fingers close to the keys can make crossing the break so much easier. So that gives you an overview of kind of the most important things to look for in your students when you're trying to get them to hold their hands in the best position. And it'll make their playing a lot easier for them and for you as a teacher to listen to.